Yo guys, welcome to the Blue Podcast with me, Smackers and Ben. How you doing, mate? Good, thanks. I will preface, I've had a couple of beverages before we get into this. Yeah, it's uh, good Friday good. after all, good is one. it not? Jeez. Uh, but, go on. Jeez. 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 I've got my new uh, Chelsea hey. mug that I got for Chelsea. my birthday, Chelsea. which was uh, a week ago today. Chelsea, Chelsea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's obviously why you didn't have a podcast on um, Friday was because it was my birthday and I ended up being too busy. We did plan to do a podcast, but you're now getting that podcast today. So mm. what more could you want? Wow. So yeah, uh, as you can see by the title, today is the Premier League top 10 fullbacks. Obviously, we are working through the teams. But before we get into that, we are an ambassador for a new app called LinkMe. It's an app that makes juggling social media accounts easier than ever. Make sure to download the app with the link down below. As well as check out our merch, which I am repping as per usual, um, which also is merch that um, isn't available anymore. But we've got better merch out, so it's all good. We've got like a chel- we've got like a blue podcast football shirt. We've got one with a cool design on that we've got a graphic designer to sort out. So, like, there is better merch out there now, yeah. is what I'm saying. Have you bought that shit yet? Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of persuading my parents to buy me. Oh, me right. It's, it's, a, it's a, gradual, <laughs> a gradual process. A... Well, you know, it's my birthday and Easter, so I'm like, you know what? I need that hoodie. You know, uh, yeah, you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. Um, but, yeah, it's been an entertaining week of football in terms of our clubs, if I don't say so myself. I'd rather start with your stuff than mine because otherwise it's going to be go on for a bit of time. Uh, we'll start it. off. We'll, st- we'll start off with Wednesday. We'll start off with Wednesday. Obviously, City and Liverpool played on Wednesday. City played Atletico Madrid. Basically, it kind of did what Atletico Madrid d- tend to do to other clubs, and yeah. Liverpool played Benfica and then almost sh- uh, cracked the bed. Yeah, I mean, I bit. mean, they they were always going to go through. Yeah. They, did, they, did, they did rotate, didn't they? So. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was on for another for another another double win there with yeah. my prediction. So if you also if you check out our uh, predictions at like the pre podcast one, that would be fantastic. We we've actually had uh, five more people recent. I think four or five more people get um, predictions correct recently. So our league is getting bigger. But obviously, do also uh, if even if even if you uh, realize that you're not going to beat me, who is the top of the predictions league. Uh, make sure you do still comment on our Twitter whenever we do our predictions for Chelsea, City, Liverpool, Arsenal and United because you'll be added into our group chat and then next season there'll actually be a prize for the winner um, so yeah, obviously do get involved with that and uh, yeah, we've had a few people actually get involved recently which is uh, which is very nice so yeah, at the Blue Podcast 1 on Twitter to get involved with that and our polls, obviously we do a few polls which may be coming to our TikTok slash our second channel. So, you know, we've got lots to look forward to. But, obviously, I didn't get the predictions right because I predicted 3-1 Liverpool and 1-0 City, like, obviously, it was the week before, which I also predict, but I predicted 1-0 City, 2-1 Liverpool the week before. Almost got the dirty double, but I didn't because the Benfica goalkeeper decided to come out of his goal um, for some stupid reason, in my opinion. (laughs) <laughs> for the third for the third Liverpool goal last week but obviously yeah Liverpool went through almost crapped the bed but obviously even <laughs> it, 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 after they scored three goals it was literally done and dusted but the City game had a lot more to it in terms of well I mean Foden got kicked on the floor Grealish got his hair pulled Savage yeah. should have been sent off in my opinion I don't think yeah. he was but he should have been no, he should have been yeah I didn't watch the game because I was too depressed after the yeah. previous night, let's see. How was it from you? I mean, uh, yeah, we obviously, um, like you said, did a bit of an Atletico to Atletico, um, and uh, I know the Atletico president came out and basically said we parked the bus and put up a wall against them. Like, <laughs> yeah. that sounds familiar. Yes, yeah, so it does sound familiar. Doesn't um, it? But yeah, we obviously rode our luck a little bit at the at, near the end of that game. Um, and then obviously there's the stuff with you know the 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 brawl that happened and it's just it was just ridiculous really basically uh, yeah um, the Atletico players you know throwing 
throwing a paddy, throwing the tyres out the pram because they, they knew they were going to lose in the end. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, it's nice, uh, happy that we got through. Um, but, I mean, De Bruyne went off injured. Walker went off Walker injured. Walker got badly injured, didn't he? Yeah. Um, obviously, Foden had that knock. It's like, so that, obviously, it's, I'm ha- glad, well, yeah, happy we got through. But it, that that win might cost us more than than uh, than we wanted it to cost us. Because um, if if those players are seriously injured, which Walker looked like is De Bruyne, I'm not, be, yeah, from what I yeah, like that. De Bruyne, I'm not so sure. Uh, but I think if, Foden's fine. Yeah, Foden Foden should be all right. But if if De Bruyne is injured as well, then that's gonna destroy our season. Um, no, I wouldn't say destroy your season. No, no, we've, but, seen, we've seen like De Bruyne yeah, at the first half of this we, we, season. We, okay, can I just say, at the first half of this season, De Bruyne wasn't involved really. So no. I wouldn't say it destroys your season. It just doesn't help. No, it wouldn't. Okay, yeah, it wouldn't destroy our season, but it makes it even more difficult. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. Like, I agree with that. Even more difficult um, because, like, I mean, like you say, first half of the season he wasn't really involved. He wasn't in form at all. Second half of the season is absolutely Massively fantastic, involved, yeah. and is 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 really important to us. So if he was to be injured, it's going to make it. I mean, obviously you've got the players and stuff like that, but it's like we were saying about Chelsea. It's like, yeah, you've got the squad, but like the first team players are first team players for a reason because they are yeah. like key players. But so if the Bruyne's not there, it's going to be like say even more difficult. But hmm. obviously. Uh, nice to get through, and I'd rather play Madrid than Chelsea because we never win against an English team, and also uh, because we're better than Madrid. So you know. that, there's a little bit of that as well, but that's not to say Madrid are not a threat. Oh yeah, yeah. no, yeah, they they, no. they are a very good side. Just yeah. they're not as good as us. Um, with with VAR as well, though, I have, I have a question for you: Is um, how did Savage not get sent off for booting Foden on the floor? I'm not sure. Like not sure. it doesn't it doesn't really sure. make any sense, does it? Really not sure. You... I'll, uh, yeah, um it's just it's just like that's the whole point in uh in VAR being there and it just didn't do anything. And I know we got the rub we got the rub of the green in some of the decisions, uh like the penalty decisions. Um but yeah, it's. Um, I mean, again, in that case, it swings and roundabouts. But for for the savage thing, it's. I, I don't know. I really don't know. They obviously were trying to be lenient or something, but it doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, it, it it doesn't it doesn't make sense. But I, I don't have uh, I don't have the answers <laughs> for you really. Um, no, yeah. Well, obviously, I don't agree with VAR, um, especially in the Champions League recently. Um, and obviously, we'll get into that later. So when I saw that as well, I was a bit like, well, he's just fouled Foden and then just kicked him on the floor. And there's no repercussions for that, which yeah. is just, just to me is well, just yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe it's English bias. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's Felipe who did that one to, and he's the one who eventually got sent off. But he should have been yellow carded there and then for that challenge. Um, yeah. But well, yeah. I, I, in my opinion, that's a red card in itself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Holmes but, on the floor. Yeah, you can't just yeah. kick someone on the floor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Crazy. But yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, and like I say, that uh, that it, it could cost us. In terms of in terms of injuries and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, or, exactly. If, if Foden got injured like, on all that, all those antics would cost us in terms of injuries, which, like we say, makes our season more difficult. So it's like it's just not not on really. It's not it's not sporting anyway. But yeah, so unsurprisingly, uh, the Spanish clubs had a bit of uh, VAR help, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, there was a few decisions that went for us, but again, I think in that case. It swings in roundabouts, but in this case of like Savage and stuff, it's just like that was just bonkers. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, well, that, that's the whole point of it being there. Like, what's the point in VAR being in there if it's not going to send him off? I mean, obviously, it didn't influence the the result, like the 
end result of the game, but it it could have, you know. Yeah. Well, no, it, it, the thing is, it's, it's not even it's not even it could have affected necessarily the outcome of the game. It can affect the rest of your season. If let's say, yeah. imagine imagine if Foden was properly injured from from being kicked on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Well, uh, should we move on to affecting the rest of the season? In my opinion. Yeah. Did you uh, Did you watch the Chelsea game? I uh, watched the highlights. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, it's... again, like I said, I'd rather play Madrid, but yeah. how, how Chelsea didn't uh, go on to win that, uh, uh, that is, is crazy. I mean, like I say, this Madrid are, uh, are, are still a threat. They missed the Champions League, aren't they? Yeah, um, but they, the the chances that Chelsea had. Were... Oh no, yeah. I, I, I the, th- the thing is, I, I called it from the moment um, Rodrigo came on. So mm. obviously, Rodrigo came on. I said, like, I literally said to my dad, he's going to score. And then, obviously, then like Pusic missed the first chance, and I said, we've missed too many chances. We aren't going to win this. He then misses another, even easier chance at the end. Mm. And obviously we go on to lose. Obviously, yes, Kante basically gave the ball away for both goals, which obviously, as supposedly the best midfield, like I, I don't. It's it's really horrible to blame him because obviously, um, it's Kante, but the, the, it's just the 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 fact that the whole team played so well, and then it's to an extent. One person's mistake, mm. which then, but, but which which obviously then had to be finished off by ridiculous brilliance. Like yeah. the Modric pass is one in a million. Like mm. it's a ridiculous pass. So like, yes, he gave the ball away, but then it, it had to be it's still in a yeah unbelievable in a that wasn't skill a, to then that, score the goal. Yeah, it was still in a position that wasn't that much of a threat, but it exactly yeah it was still the catalyst, is what you say yeah. That's, why, that's, that's uh, all I'm saying, and I obviously, you know me. I hate to, um, I hate to put Kante down, but obviously he did. Yeah, yeah, ball, it's like, just... both of those goals. Yeah. Um, there was also two. The reason I brought up the VAR decisions with with City is because there were two VAR decisions which I just haven't still been able to ha- wrap my head around. Uh, the first one is uh, Mount gets played the ball. He's not offside. Uh, like comfortably not offside, the ball gets played around. Uh, Havertz goes to try and beat the ball from Courtois. Uh, who's that Brazilian bastard who I flipping hate right now? I love no, because he's no, a tosser. Militao, no, Cas- Casemiro, Casemiro, Casemiro is a tosser. I'm just, I'm just gonna put that out there. Casemiro is a tosser. Okay. Uh, Casemiro takes out Havertz, so he hasn't even got the opportunity to challenge the ball with Courtois. Which then is a foul for Courtois, which again, VAR, what the, f- I don't want to swear, what the hell are you doing mm. when you can literally see, like, okay, if he was offside, fine, call it for the offside. But he wasn't offside. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then he just gets taken out in front of the ball in the box. Okay. And then I moved on. I realized we were playing really well. I had to move on. Timo Werner, in my opinion, I wish that that goal got us through because obviously it would have changed his Chelsea career, in my opinion. But I, I think it, I think in a lot of Chelsea people's eyes it would have, have would have because yeah. that front three played phenomenally. Um, obviously, the like Mount scored as we as I would have predicted because he's just he's just fucking unbelievable right now. And then Alonso scores. And I still haven't seen an angle where the ball changes any chi- kind of movement because of his hand. It's it's the very, 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 very slightest of touches that the pick. But up the, but, but the ball doesn't change. No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't no, exactly. No, that exa- exactly. It doesn't change. So it's 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 very. It's like if, basically... saying, if, it, if, if it did touch, the spin yeah. would have changed. And yeah, it but it. it it's, it, I think, well, 
basically, uh, it, they, um, I think it's very, very soft. It, it That's right, it's soft, mate. Well, the who, who's the who's the who's the ref, ex referee that always like they go to to check? Oh, right? it, it it? Or something. Well, it, it wasn't him. It was the other one. Oh, I'm not sure. I remember his name, but he then at the time said that's a goal, and right. when he says that's a goal, that's when yeah. you know it should have been a goal yeah. because I mean, every I'm... time Klattenberg and the other guy always agree with the ref or whatever decision yeah. ends up happening. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look at the look at it again because the 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 highlights that I saw, it, I, I I was like it's it was like that's not really handball. It's very 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 slight. But, but the it's, thing is, though, it's like it's slight if it did. Like you can't even tell if it even did, which yeah. therefore is inconclusive. I, the I saw, I thought, according to the rules, yeah. should be the on field decision. Yeah. At the angle I saw, I thought, oh, it's it's very faint, but that's like nothing. That's what I thought, but. Like maybe maybe it didn't like it didn't at all, but yeah. like it's, it, it, it's so inconclusive though. And yeah, according yeah. to the rules, it should be there for the on-field decision because it's inconclusive. There's no, yeah. it's oh, anyway. Yeah. Either way, it's it. it's very 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 very. It's sad. controversial, but like it's what I said at the time was if they call it, it's too controversial for them to call it yeah. in a in a quarter final of Chelsea versus Real Madrid, and yet they yeah. still did. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's yeah, ridiculous, really. But when it I mean, I, when I was it, it and um, me and my dad's hearts did break. What's that? I was saying, obviously, they did go on to win it. Yeah, yeah. And me and my dad's hearts did break. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and my dad were probably sat on the sofa for fifteen minutes in silence after the final whistle because. It wasn't deserved. Uh, like, yeah, I know I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm going to say that. But I just thought the the fact that I even finished 3-2 was just so undeserved. And it 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 did. It, it probably was one of the most painful games to have watched as a Chelsea fan for a long time in terms of just... Yeah, it was just painful. It was very, very, very painful to watch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you're, what, 3 nil up, like, it's always... It's, it's at 75 minutes as well. Yeah, 75 minutes. And, it, like, if a team comes back from that, it's always going to be painful. Um, but, like, also, we were 3 nil up after already having the two VAR decisions go against us. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, yeah. I'm just having a look at the Alonso thing. Mate, it doesn't even touch it. It's actually like, look at the spin of the ball. Look at the spin of the ball. It doesn't change. That's what baffles me. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The spin doesn't change, which is it's like that's 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 the best indicator. So yeah, any, anyone that's listening, Ben is currently watching the supposed Alonso handball, and I've seen the him angle, the angle from it the about angle. five, six times. Yeah, the angle from behind. It's like the angle from behind is obviously going to look like it is, but it's the if it is, it's the faintest of touches where it hits his thigh. Yeah, and there's a little nick off his hand that makes it go forward a little bit more. That's it. That's if that if that is what they're saying is handball. That's it. But it, again, it's inconclusive. So yeah, like what angle have they seen from VAR to be able to say that that is handball? Because it the ball looks like it, it comes it, off his thigh. It, well, it looks like it it comes off his thigh, but then. From the angle on the front, it looks like it goes further forward after it's hit his hand. But I don't like it's. You don't know if that's just his thigh or it's his hand. It's because his hand is there. It's inconclusive, isn't it? Yeah, that, that that's that's what I mean, though. That's what I mean. The rules, like I don't know. I, I'm gonna get really, really upset yeah. if I'm talking about this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Um, just I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, in it's, conclusion, that that game uh, hurt probably the most a Chelsea game has hurt for a long time. 
Like even even the Carabao Cup final didn't hurt as much as as that game did. That game that game really hurt because we deserve to win that. Like, yeah. so I every, every, I'd, I'd say every player that started in that game deserved to win that game uh, as a Chelsea fan. But I reckon that the Zoom it's not the most controversial. Well, not controversial. The most interesting Champions League result. No. I mean, I, I think that I think they've zoomed in on it and thought, mm, you know, they've, they've but, 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 yeah, but but like even if even if it's yeah, like, yeah. I think if, it touched yeah. it, and if if it did, then we might as well but call this, it. This is what, this, it's against the rules. It's not is, the rules. What, no, this is what I was gonna. This is what I was gonna say. The very fact that they would have to zoom in means it's inconclusive. That's what I was meaning. But anyway, we'll move on to the to the uh, the the thingy result. Yeah, also, can I preface, uh, the, the Champions League stuff was supposed to take 10 minutes. Uh, we're now 20 minutes into a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, that was, obviously, that game hurt for me personally. But, obviously, it wasn't the most, what's the word, interesting result of the night on Tuesday. Because, obviously, Villarreal beat Real Madrid over two legs. By a minute. By Munich, sorry, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've got Bell, Real, Real Madrid are living rent-free yeah. in my head right now, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yes, so Villarreal beat... Uh, yeah, I mean... By Munich, which, uh, I'm not going to lie, is baffling. Like, I genuinely thought they'd go through... Like, I thought they would do what they did in the last leg, or the last um, round, where yeah. obviously they drew the first leg and then just won 7-0. I yeah. thought they'd do the same thing. And then they give Liverpool a really good run for their money. Yeah. Obviously, now I personally think Liverpool are going to, going to it, Paris. Yeah, uh, I think. I mean, don't like get don't get it wrong. Villarreal are a good team in their own right, but everyone expects and knows Liverpool will smash them. Uh, well, no, maybe not smash them, but they will win. Yeah, which is and ba- so basically without. Tries to be disrespectful. Liverpool have basically got, got a bye to the final now. And that's not because Villarreal are a bad team, it's just because Liverpool are such a good team. Um, so, yeah. And I don't want to, I mean, I saw I saw uh, some City fans on Twitter being like, I don't want to hear about getting an easy cup draw ever again. Because they've had Benfica and Villarreal. Very tough, very tough run in the Champions League, that. Jesus, you know what I mean? Like That is the easiest run in the Champions League yeah, ever. Ever, no? yeah ridiculous um and so obviously we've got madrid that's going to be difficult and if we get past that we'll have to play liverpool which is uh, probably which is another yeah, imagine, well, imagine a liverpool we'll have to play liverpool we'll, city final that would be insane. It's, it's a big if if we get past madrid no it's, it's not a big if like the, the the fact that we battered them over what i'd say the second half of the first leg and then 120 minutes yeah. But this is of this the is second leg makes me yeah. think. Considering you are better than us, like you've beaten us one nil twice this season, you are yeah. better than us this but season. At least. Thinking if you think you should fucking we pass the 20, 20 minute mark, so I can swear now. You will <laughs> fucking beat them. You will fucking but, beat them. But I'm don't sorry. forget, this is City in the Champions League, so anything can happen. Nah, nah. And, and your, so, only but, issue, but, play, your only issue is if you play an English side. That's your only yeah, issue. Well, yeah, this, that, that was going to be my my other argument. Well, not argument, but the counter to that is it's not an English side, so it might be okay in a sense. It'll be fine. But yeah, if if we do get past Madrid, we'll probably have to, well, we will be have to play Liverpool, which is an English team. We never win against English teams. Brilliant. But uh, yeah, no, nah, it's... it's uh, it's gonna be difficult, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just, I would, have, uh, I would have loved, I would have loved to have played you in the next round, even if we lost. It just would have been so good for firstly the podcast, yeah, uh, yeah. and secondly, just it would have been entertaining. In it my would, opinion, yeah. more entertaining. I, I, I will, I will, I will struggle to watch the Real Madrid City game. In my opinion, yeah, because yeah. it just it will hurt. It will it genuinely will hurt too much. Yeah, I mean, like, like I've already said, like I'd rather play Madrid because I would, I would, it's like again, 
it's an English team if it, if it was playing Chelsea. So it would it'd be sod's law and typical City that would beat you twice already this season and would lose to you in the Champions League. That would that would have been what would have happened. Or like we'd win the the second leg and draw the first or something. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's it, that would be that that that's exactly the reason I didn't want to play you. Not I'm not not don't get me wrong. Obviously, I completely understand that you know, like you say, you're it's it was uh not not great but like yeah no, for, no for, for you it's the best result for you yeah, it's the best a, result. from a city point of view i'd rather play madrid any day of the week so yeah for you it's definitely the best result yeah all right shall we move on to our top 10 fullbacks of the premier league yeah. so what we're going to do as per usual is we'll read out a bunch of uh fullbacks that we just think are in contention for the top 10 and then obviously we'll read out our own we'll debate it and then we'll decide what the blue podcast's top 10 is <laughs> which uh is always fun anyway uh the first person we're going to talk about is bakary sagner obviously played for arsenal and your team sagner? city who's sagner sagner yeah it's nice it's sakari banya you know what i mean bakary bakary sanya well, Sakari, 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 Sakari. Yeah. Do you not remember that? He said the the uh, the guy on Sky where it was like Sakari yeah. Banya. Oh no, Sakari Sanya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was he? How was he for you? Average. He was very average for City. Um, yeah. Like it wasn't. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't terrible. Just very average. And then, in my opinion, also for Arsenal, he was relatively average. Obviously, he wasn't. I'd say no. I'd say overall above average. Obviously, that's why he's on this list. But you know, if that doesn't tell you that he's probably not in our top tens, then yeah. we can. Yeah, he, like he was a good player. Didn't win any Premier League titles. Obviously, it was after the invincible season with Arsenal, and obviously went to, on to City, and then didn't win a title with City yeah. either. He was at City at the time between our second title and the third title, so. Like, I mean, I, I guess you could say he's unlucky in a sense, but also that was just kind of because City had gone through the first, well, not for first phase, but like they'd gone through winning the first two titles and then they were in that stage of renewal because um, the team was starting to age then. Um, and that's when he was there. So it was kind of a bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of those ones. One of those ones. Well, keeping with City. Kyle Walker is up next. He has now won three Premier League titles. Obviously not with Spurs because they're shit. He, he also did obviously play, as I said, for Spurs and obviously played for City where he's won all three of his titles. He's been pretty good for you, hasn't he? And for England. Yeah, I think he's, uh, well, he's easily in mind anyway. Um, but yeah, no, he, I mean, obviously some, it's, I, know, I mean, it's a valid criticism that sometimes defensively is a bit suspect but even when he is he's got the recovery pace and 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 when he is in form defensively is is really yeah. good as well he's fine right. as well. and, and it's, the mad thing is his age and then yet he's still got that speed oh yeah yeah and he and i mean he's not even like the best going forward but he's going forward he's decent as well so he's decent at both and not like i say he's not probably the best in both but he's good at both so yeah and I, I, I i think that there is obviously one person in this team that isn't uh, sorry in your current team is obviously a fullback that isn't in this list because obviously his best season has probably been this season yeah. so it's very hard to put him in a top 10 of all time yeah but i do want to give an honorable mention to cancello at and as a left back who yeah. again like cliche who obviously is in this list when we come up to it uh was a right-footed left back um but like the, the fact the fact that Cancelo is playing left back and yes I would say that actually Cancelo's best position is left back when you have Walker at right back as well like it, it just it obviously just works yeah yeah wonders I mean it's it's looking like he's gonna have to play right back again but uh yeah. yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, you have to play right back again. But yeah. if with with Walker being injured, but bring in uh, Zinchenko at left back, maybe or Ake. Ake's all right at left back. <laughs> He's just not a centre back. He's not a centre back. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of someone who can play full back and centre back, 
We got Cesar Azpilicueta, also known as Dave by the Chelsea fans. Uh, Obviously, he's only played for Chelsea. He's won two Premier League titles with us. Uh, he's our captain currently and uh, is still going to be our captain next season. Until In terms of club captain, obviously, he's going to be our club captain next season. Obviously, he doesn't start that many games. Apart from recently, to be fair, because of injuries and all that, we've not exactly been blessed uh, this season with uh, fitness. Uh, but, yeah, in my opinion, he's probably going to be in my top 10. Uh, he is in mine. He is phenomenal. Like, in terms of just... Week in, week out, I'd say at, yeah. le- at least a seven out of ten. Week in, week out, yeah, he's, he's, and also not just at right back, at left back, at center, like at right center back in the back yeah. three. Like he's, he's just he's been a fantastic servant for Chelsea, and, he, and yeah. you know, like I say, he's 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 also a quality player as well. Like, you know, so yeah, and, and I do think he doesn't necessarily get the justice he deserves in terms no, of no, no. I mean, I mean, even even from you, sometimes. yeah, no, even from me, I, I, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like uh, he's been doing a job at right back. He's like, oh, he's not Reese James. It's like, well, no, he's not Reese James, but he's still doing a job there. Yeah, and like, you know, he's like, like thirty two now. Like he's, yeah, he's yeah. still doing a job, and still doing a better better job than anyone else. You know, than other than Reese James in that position. So, you know, it can't be bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and uh, no, I, 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 ha- I will put my hands up right now and say I have in the past slanked him off. And in terms of all time, like obviously, the, uh, the thing is when I when I don't appreciate him currently is because of current form necessarily. Mm. But when I talk about him current, like with in, in terms of this context, I have massive, massive appreciate. Like he came in. Uh, the season we won the Europa League, and now he's won every single trophy possible to win. Yeah, like he came in 2013 after we won the Champions League, and has now won everything that we could possibly win: two Premier Leagues, two Europa Leagues, a few FA Cups. Like he is unbelievable, in my opinion. But I'll obviously be a bit biased with that. Next up, we got Pablo Zapaleta. Played for Man City and West Ham. Won two Premier League titles. Obviously, I'm going to hand over to, to Ben for this uh, analysis. I mean, he's, he's in my he's in my ten quality quality player. He, he was a like he wasn't blessed with pace, but he was a grafter. Like you know, he, you know, he he worked hard and he he did he did like he, he, was, he, was, he was definitely a team player. Like he he just did it. He works for the team, did everything for the team. It's like we, you know, like you say, if he can't yeah, with, with Aspie, like him and Aspie yeah. have got a lot in common. Yeah, yeah, just but get your head bandaged back out there, right? You know, like he he was yeah a warrior, uh, true, true, uh, true defender. But yeah, good player, very very good player. Next up, we've got quite a recent one. Uh, his teammate. Compatriot uh, does uh, come up later on in the uh, list. Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, obviously, has only played for Liverpool, has won one Premier League. We also, we, I just want to, I don't know if this is obvious to anyone that's watching. This is just a list, and then we're saying our top 10, just to clarify. I mean, yeah, both of us can say, in terms of attacking ability, he is yeah. probably the best attack, like crosser of the ball that has ever graced the Premier League. Uh, <laughs> I haven't put who I think is better than him currently in this list, but that could be controversial mm. because he hasn't won a Premier League. So obviously it's very difficult to put him in an all-time Premier League list when he hasn't won one. Mm. Although there are people in this list who have obviously won Premier Leagues. But yeah, Trent, like people do say he can't defend but he, he can. He, he, he can defend. He can, he can, but obviously his strength is attacking. Yes, um, his, his strength I, I, is attacking. And he's... Yeah. Gone. Most of the time he doesn't have to defend, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously he it, he was kind of... He's very <laughs> young as well. Very young still. Like, he has, he has the potential to be very, very great. Like, great. He, yeah, he has the potential to be great. Yeah. Um, but... He kind of was part of this duo that kind of changed a lot of people's perspectives on uh, fullbacks, which allowed, like, for example, Cancelo 
uh, to to adapt into the position that he's in. Brees James again kind of become that kind of very uh, all round game, almost like a like a midfielder who can play as a fullback. Yeah, now. yeah. yeah. Uh, he was part of that duo that Klopp created, which then obviously has changed a lot of. Well, I'd say Marcelo probably was the first one. Marcelo and Roberto Carlos yeah. uh, were probably the first two to really adapt a fullback, but he was probably part of the first one recently that's really, really kind of nailed on that position in terms of that style. Yeah. Next up, we've got Lee Dixon, who I know Ben doesn't know too much about. I mean, I know he used to be. I mean, he was, he's from Manchester. He's a City fan. Is he a City fan? Is he? <laughs> He used to put he used to support City when he was younger, yeah. I mean I, I you think you must recognise the face, right? I think he still oh no, I know who he is. I think he still yeah. does support City. Obviously he has, he talks about Arsenal because he used to play for them yeah um a lot. But yeah, he's he's from Manchester and supported City. I only know that because of FIFA. And he <laughs> like, his commentary lines uh on FIFA. Um, yeah, he used to be commented, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, it's um I mean, obviously, I, I know who he is, and but I've not seen many clips of him. I know he was quite like a um, sort of a, a warrior, combative uh, defender. Yeah, he was part of that um, invincible that team. Yeah. With, uh, who was the centre back? T- um, Terry, Terry, not Terry Adams. Tony Adams. Tony Adams. Yeah, he was part of that team. Yeah, yeah. Um, but apart from that, I don't know much else about him. Well, do you want to tell you some facts about him? Go on then, go on. He played for Arsenal and only Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, and he also pl- won four Premier League titles. It's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah. Not bad at all. And like, I will also say I have not put certain players. Who, like, Also, in the comments, obviously tell me if I missed anyone out in this list who deserve to be mentioned in terms of possibly being in the top 10. I have left out some people who were in other lists that I found online because I knew that me and Ben wouldn't know who the hell they are. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, are, we are 22 and, uh, you know, we can't know everything. Young whippersnappers. We are young whippersnappers. We are, we are. I'm not gonna lie. We are quite young on, on the uh, the scene, so you know. It's all mm. Next up, we've got Mister Eight Premier League titles. We've got Mister Sky Sports. We've got Mister Gary Neville podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Obviously, he's he's going to feature high on the list. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he says it himself that he wasn't like the most talented in terms of like technical ability and and uh, but what what he I mean he, he was good enough technically and he, he was also again a grafter worked yeah. hard um, yeah combative defender you know it's yeah one of those ones really he was one of those ones and. Uh... Obviously, he has benefited from his punditry, hasn't he? Yeah. Because he is a lot better than Carrier, as much as the Liverpool fans will not want to admit it. Mm. Yeah. Before I uh, dig myself too much of a hole, should we move on? <laughs> yeah. Next up, I mentioned him before. It's uh, Gail Clichy. He played for Arsenal and City and won three Premier League trophies. He was the understudy of Ashley Cole. Uh, in the invincible season, before it obviously actually got with Chelsea, and then he took up his spot. He is right footed as playing as a left back, but obviously, I don't know him as much as Ben does as a C fan. How was he for you? He was all right for us. He was very meh. I'm not going to lie. Like, I mean, he, he, I don't know he, he, for West Brom as well. Okay. I want to put that in there as well. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, maybe because it's a few years ago now, but from what I remember, he wasn't amazing, but he wasn't terrible. Like he, he just did it. Like he was, he was good enough. Like Bit of a job. Did, yeah, he just did a job. Like yeah, that quite yeah. 
just meh. Like, yeah, it was. It, don't get me wrong, it was good because obviously we won won the, our first league with him as left back. But I don't remember him ever being, you know, he's, amazing. He's not James Milner, is he? No, no. Well, I know I remember him setting the world alight. I know left backs aren't supposed to, but you know, in terms of like, well, they, they are nowadays. They are nowadays, but like back then they were. Yeah. Like yeah, like obviously. Um, I mean, I guess even in terms of just like from a defensive point of view, but he, he, like I say, he was obviously he was he, he was decent, like because uh, obviously we want to leave with him. But I don't remember anything amazing. Um, but yeah, fair enough. We'll move on to uh, someone who was involved in a very controversial story: uh, Wayne Bridge. We played for Southampton, Chelsea, Fulham, City, West Ham and Brighton. That's a lot of clubs. That's probably actually the most clubs mm. on this list. He probably would have stayed at Chelsea for a bit longer if it wasn't for a certain situation which shall not be named mm. with a certain centre-back who may be the greatest centre-back of all time in the Premier League because obviously Maldini is the best centre-back of all time. <laughs> he was yeah. a good player. Yeah, I mean, he was he, again. He was quite. I remember. I don't. Like, I remember him just being meh for us. Like he wasn't amazing. He wasn't. Uh, he, was, he was part of the uh, the Chelsea team that won the Premier League. Obviously, yeah. Chelsea back in that time had a unbelievable defense. So obviously, he was part of that until John Terry shagged his wife. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Like, he played for a lot of teams. Obviously, he was good. He did win a Premier League. Uh, it's the famous... Uh, he's not making a list. No. It's the famous oh, he handshake moment where he was like... He was like, you went past him, didn't he? Remember that? Remember that? Wayne Bridge, he didn't shake John Terry's hand, did he? Yeah, he did when he was playing for City. Yeah, that's some of the, the memory that I have. Yeah, I, remember that, I remember that game. He didn't shake John Terry's hand. Yeah, I remember that game because I think City won four two because Tevez had a had a blind played a blinder. Yeah, no, I, I was at that game. I was at Stamford Bridge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he played. Yeah, played yeah, a I remember that. Tevez was a was a was a was a, was a good player. He was a good player, Tevez. Was he really? I couldn't. Yeah. Guess that. Not just thought I'd uh, remind remind. Uh, yeah, uh, no, yeah, good remind. good memory to bring back of my childhood. Cheers, mate. But if Tevez ruining your day. Yeah, well, because Frank Lampard, scored, so we we left when it was four one, and then Frank Lampard scored a penalty to make it four two. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to John Arne <laughs> Reese. I don't know Rice. I don't, I don't know how to Reese. 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 Yeah. Obviously played for Liverpool and Fulham. Didn't win a Premier League because Liverpool don't win Premier Leagues apart from recently. Yeah, I think he won the Champions League with them, didn't he? I have no idea, possibly, I don't know. But, obviously, this is a Premier League thing, so, you know, we keep it a Premier League. But I did, obviously, I've, I have heard that he was very, very good for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard he was phenomenal for Liverpool. Yeah. And I can't really tell you much more, unless Ben can. I can't. I just know he was good. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right, next up, the Englishman Graham Lassou, who does not sound English at all. No. <laughs> he played for Black uh, Chelsea, Blackburn, Chelsea, Southampton. He won uh, the Premier League with Alan Shearer at Blackburn. Oh. He was obviously with Chelsea, went, back, went to Blackburn, won the Premier League, came back to the best club in the world, and then moved on to Southampton. Uh, I know he was very, very good. I think he was part of our FA Cup winning team uh, when... Oh, I'm going to kill myself. I forgot his name. Uh, who was the manager that won us our first Champions League? Oh, Di Matteo. Di Matteo won us, won us the FA Cup or whatever a few seasons. Where he was part of that team. Oh, sure. what, won, won the FA Cup with you? Yes. What, Rude Hullet? No, 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 no. Uh, Di Matteo scored a uh, like a thirty-yard shot. Matteo, it, was the, no, it was the League Cup. It was the League Cup. Ah, it was the League Cup. He scored a three-man on my on my parents' um, 
honeymoon. Jay. And my dad was watching it, obviously, at night, and then woke up my mum when he scored it. <laughs> Little fun fact, fact about the McLeaves. Yeah. Uh, next time we got Leighton Baines, obviously only played for Everton, and won nothing, and I think we can move on. Cool. Because, <laughs> like, Rick, like, he deserves a mention. Yeah, he's a good, good player, but... Like well, you said it was a. You saying with like you saying it's a Premier League one. He's not won one, so it's difficult, really. But not yeah. so he's not a good player. He, he was, but obviously he won one. So. Next up, we've got fat ass himself, Branislav Ivanovic, who played for Chelsea and West Brom, and won three Premier League titles with Chelsea. I remember growing up watching him, and he was a beast of a right back, like. If you got past him, you got beaten. Like not like beat. I'm not not so like beaten. Like he like get past you. I'm talking like abused. <laughs> <laughs> he was huge and like like he he just he just every shot or cross. He didn't go for accuracy. He just hit it with all of his muscles, and he was a big bloke. And I just remember growing up with him as a right right back, and he was just. I loved him, in my opinion. Do you remember much about Ivanovic? Not much. Um, I mean, I, 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 he's in my he's in my ten uh, because I, you know, I think he. I, I mean, I, I'd like to say I don't know much about him, but, but from what I've seen, he was he's he was a quality right back. Like he, he was, he was a, yeah, very good. Uh, Not in my top five, but he's in my top. No, five. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it, really. Uh, next up, we've got Dennis Irwin, who has won seven Premier League titles. Yeah. Is arguably one of the best players on this list. He's United and Wolves. Yeah, he, he's featuring very featuring very highly on, high in my list. Not that I know much about him. I've seen. But you just but, you just have to, isn't it? He, yeah, it's, lead, like, it's, it's Dennis Irwin. When when when. Ex professionals talk about him. They it's, they they rate him very very highly. And we made a mistake um, when we did our all time eleven uh, right at the start of our podcasting career. And I remember like a few people saying like you didn't mention Dennis Owen. Yeah, like even when they, when they talk even remotely about like a fullback, like oh Dennis Owen, quality because he can play yeah. both right and left, can't he as well? Like yeah. yeah. He can play both both sides. I know my dad's mentioned like uh, so. I spoke to my dad about this list um, before I kind of finalised it, and he was like, "Yeah, Dennis Owen should be up there because, yeah. like, yeah, obviously before our time, really, but the the fact the fact that we could, we were even speaking about him like this does just kind of show yeah. the quality that he clearly had at the time, yeah. and we know about it. Like, yes, me and Ben know ball." But like the fact that we know that much about how like we have to put him in high at this list shows. Yeah. yeah. No, the the um yeah, he, he's, he's definitely a uh, featured highly on the list. He's got to with everything. Obviously, expressional says you say you see clips of him, and you know it's yeah, it's uh, seven Premier League titles as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be good if he do that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, penultimate is another United player and also played for West Ham is Patrice Evra. Uh, no, it's not penultimate actually, he's third, third last. Uh, five, five, I didn't realize this as well when I was doing my research. Five Premier League titles, mate. Yeah, I mean, he was at United in the noughties when they were, uh, you know, I didn't realize really, it was five. Like, right, you're bearing in mind, like, Gary Neville and Dennis Irwin have won eight and seven. Yeah, and he's still won five. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like it's actually just bonkers how many yeah. ti- like titles you know. He used, used, to, used to win, yeah, win it left, right, and centre United. Um, yeah, well, to be fair, he did. He did also play as a winger at certain points. Yeah, yeah. His his main position was right back, like his best position in my opinion. Left back, yeah. Full back. I'm not deciding which one. <laughs> but uh, everyone was a left back. That's, oh yeah, no, yeah, no. Oh no, I'm thinking about Valencia. Ah, 
yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Let's yeah. Right was, was a was a was a right, was a left back. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, I remember. I remember him. I remember hating him as a Chelsea fan. I'm sure. You yeah, know. he's a proper. Like he he was United United through and through. Uh, he was, like, he? like he would. Yeah, like he, he was very much like he would do it. Um, do anything for United, I think. <laughs> and uh, now he eats raw chicken. Yeah. Uh, now penultimate is Andy Robertson. I felt like I had to put him on this list because obviously he has won a Premier League, which certain polite people on this list haven't. Uh, he's obviously was part of the geo that has probably changed uh, fullbacks in in general in terms of what they are and, and what they do. Uh, obviously, he's only played for Liverpool, played for Hull before that, but that's obviously not Premier League, so who cares? Um, yeah, I, I just I just thought I had to mention him in this list. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it's between him and uh, another player that I was kind of thinking between to put in. Really. Um, yeah, fair enough. And then, last but not least, who I'm going to admit is my number one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there is the. I mean, don't don't get me wrong; he is number one, but there is this sort of like mystique. No, but, yeah, I know, but the, the, there's there's a reason. All the pundits, like, all the experts, yeah, yeah, yeah. even Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead. But like, there is this sort of mystique that make that people make think that he's like second in list. Or, say whoever second in list for us is here, and he's like up here, and that's I not. Know. I get what you mean. Yeah, that's not the case. Like he is better. He is the top, but he's not like got god powers. You know what I mean? Like he's not I, like. I think I think the reason that like that mystique has occurred is because. For was it three, two or three seasons, he had Ronaldo in his pocket. And yeah. he was, oh no, but no, like yeah, Ronaldo was young, whatever. But he had Ronaldo in his pocket when no one else could. That's yeah. what. That's what a lot of people put that. value on. I get that, and I I understand. Yeah, he's not there. Yeah, but in my opinion, he's still there. Because yeah, I've yeah, I've seen yeah. it, I've seen him. Obviously, he played for Arsenal, was part of the Invincibles team. Uh, he, oh, was yeah, yeah. He, was, he was at Palace on loan, uh, if you didn't know that. Obviously, then he yeah. came to Chelsea, was part of that uh, team that only conceded 15 goals in a season. Like we talk, bro, he didn't lose us. He, he didn't lose a game, and then he did. He only conceded 15 goals in a season. That is that is unheard yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get it wrong. Like That's absolutely. unheard of. Absolutely, he is top. But like, like I say, I do think there is this sort of like this thing. One where seven Premier like League people sort of discount everything else. Seven. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm get. I, I agree with you. He is top, but there is this thing where people sort of go, "Oh no, nah, he's crap." Because Ashley Cole did, you know, like you know what I mean. Like that's not the case, you know. Yeah, but also, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here as a Chelsea fan. <laughs> The only yeah. person who's won more Premier League titles on this list is Gary Neville with eight. Yeah. Gary Neville's better. All right. All right. Let's do our <laughs> top 10 quickly and then we'll wrap this up. In 10th place for me is Trent Alexander Arnold. I've went put Ivanovic 10th. Oh, he's number six for me. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Who have you got in ninth? Ninth, I have got Evera. Ever wow, I've got ever fifth. Oh. Uh, in eighth, I've got Carl Walker. Eighth, I have got Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon, he's third. Third, madness. Who have you got in seventh? Seventh, I have Zab Zabaleta, my guy. Ah, uh, so do I. Yeah. And sixth, I've got Cesar Azpilicueta. I've got Aspi sixth, yeah. Nice, nice. I think, wait, 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 have I got this wrong? So, I, wait, in tenth, I've got Trent. In ninth, oh no, in ninth, I've got Kyle Walker. Right, Kyle Walker. Well, no, because he's not, he's not better than Azpilicueta, Lee Dixon, Zabaleta, <laughs> is he? Crazy, crazy. All right, in fifth. Fifth, I've got Trent. 
Trent, no, he's not, he, he's not, he's not won it yet. He's won it. He's, he's, won he's it. not there yet. He's not there yet. He's not a Obviously, I said that. In fourth, <laughs> I had Gary Neville. Got Walker fourth. In third. For you? Oh, me. Um, oh. Dennis Irwin third. I had Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon. In second, I had Dennis Irwin. Second, G Nev. Where's G Nev for you? Fourth. Four. All right. Yeah, second G Nev. And then, obviously, first Ashley Cole. First Ashley Cole, yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to have to wrap this up quickly for you. But uh, do let us know if you agree or not with our decisions. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like. It greatly helps us out more than probably you can imagine. Subscribe if you're new around here. And hopefully we'll see you for on Wednesday for another Moon Knight uh, episode, which will be going very well, and I'm very much enjoying. Cheers.